This video is part of a multi-part series on how to mine different coins at the same time. We're going to focus here on Chia, but if you'd like to understand how to mine other coins along with Chia, then check out those videos as well. Now, let's get started. In the last couple of videos, you've seen how to mine Ethereum on the GPU and Monero on the CPU. Now let's take a look at how to mine Chia using the free storage on your device. The setup for Chia mining can be broken down into five distinct steps. First of which is the wallet setup. And then you sync the blockchain and the wallet with the latest data. And you top up your Chia account from some faucet. And you generate some plots with the mining pool and then you start mining. So let's get started with the first step and the rest of them will start making sense as we go through them. So if you go to the official Chia website and you say farm Chia, the term farming is used in the context of Chia instead of mining due to the fact that we're not trying to find a solution for each block. We predefine those solutions or we pre-generate some solutions and then we look them up at the time of mining or farming. So we download the Windows one. I'm not gonna download this because I already have the file on my desktop. And yes, just double click this file and then the setup will automatically install everything. This is a no prompt setup, so you won't have to answer anything. So I'm just gonna delete the setup file. So now we're opening a full-fledged wallet. So I have some pre-existing keys, which I'm not gonna use. For the sake of the setup, I'm gonna create a new key. So this is your seed. Please take note of this if you want to get back into this wallet later. And that's it. Now you have a new Chia wallet. And when you open this up, you can see this dashboard where it says you're not synced. This means you don't have the latest block information or the latest blockchain information. Because I've already set this up before, I already have about 1.3 million blocks on my device. But you'll probably see the peak height at 0 or 1. And you'll see the not synced. In a few seconds, it will start connecting to some other nodes which have the latest information. As you can see here, I've just connected to a full node and the latest height it has is 1.37 million. So I'm at 1.32 million. So I have about 42,000 blocks that I need to catch up. This is gonna take a bit of time. While it does happen in the background, we can look at the next steps. So we're waiting for the block 10 to sync and the wallet. So there is there are two things that need to sync. First is a blockchain and then the wallet. So each wallet you have has to sync separately. So because as you have seen, I've created a new wallet. It's starting from zero and it has to go all the way to the latest block number, which is 1.37 million. So this is going to take quite a bit of time. From what I noticed, uh, the full blockchain sync would take from zero, would take about three days. So there's a lot of waiting around uh, for this for the next step. So you don't actually do anything rather than just waiting. Leave the application open. You can mine Ethereum and Monero in, the, in parallel while you wait this blockchain thing to happen. We can, however, top up our account with a bit of Chia, which we'll need in order to create plots. So if you go to plots um, and try to new, create a new plot, You'll have a bunch of options. So you have like five different options to pick from. We'll go through these options later on, but the most important one is join a pool. Even though this is optional, if you want to make steady revenue, to be honest, if you want to make any revenue, with, unless you have a ton of storage, you need to join a pool. And this is the reason why we need some XEH, because in order to create this pool, so the plots are created either for solo mining or for pool mining. And in order to create plots for pool mining, plots are basically files which contain solutions that you're going to use for mining, right? So in order to join a pool, you need to create plots which support pool mining. It doesn't have to be assigned to a specific pool, but it has to support pool mining. And to do that, you need some Chia. And so when you say join a pool, it will ask you to add some XEH. To your wallet because your wallet balance is zero we just created the wallet so if you click add faucet it will redirect you to the faucet from which you can top up your wallet you don't have to pay for this you just need your 
receiving address. So you have a receiving address, just copy it and then put it here. So this is a service which gives you small fractions of chia. So they won't, from monetary point of view, they won't really amount to much, but you need this base amount in order to get started for the next steps. So if you go back to our steps, so we're waiting on the blockchain to sync, but we just topped up our chia from the faucet. So we have done up to step three, but we're still waiting on this. As you can see, we're still syncing and our balance won't show up. Don't worry. That's because we only have about 4,000 blocks on our local cache. And we still have, we are probably, we'll receive the balance probably at 1.37 million block. So until we get to that block into our wallet, we won't see the balance as spendable. And so the problem is we can't move on to the next step until we have the block where we see a finite amount of balance in our wallet. So once we have the balance, you'll be able to create new plots. So let's wait for a few minutes for the wallet to sync up and then we can start creating plots. All right, it's been a few days. And as you can see, my blockchain is still syncing up, still got about 29,000 blocks to go. But if you open up the wallet, which is still syncing, you can see some finite amount of balance. That's because the block where I sent myself from the faucet has already confirmed in my local cache. So I have some balance of XCH and the smallest unit of XCH is called one mojo, which is one trillionth of an XCH, Chia. And I need one mojo in order to create plots. Now that I have a finite balance, I'm gonna to try to create plots. So when you get create plots, let's go through these options now. For the plotter, you can use the default one for most people. But if you have an NVMe SD card, uh, then you can pick the Mad Max plotter. If you're not sure, just go with the default one. And the blade bit plotter is not for most people because that requires like four to 500 gigs of RAM. And the second one is a plot size. So each plots at the time of generation are generated using a parameter called K. The network requires that the minimum K value used to should be 32. So even if you can have 25 as an option here, if you select it, you won't be able to mine anything with that plots. So there's no point in mining with 30, 25. So I'm just gonna pick the 32, the least available number supported by the network. And depending on the value of K, it will determine the size of the plot file. The smallest plot, files, plot file that you can use for mining is 101 gigabytes. I'm just gonna go with the one plot for now. And we won't go into the advanced options, but we will in a bit uh, at a later point. And for the temporary directory, so when generating the plot, it will write a bunch of files. It, it's basically very IO intensive. So what it does is it writes all these files and reads from that file in a temporary directory. And finally, when the plot file is ready, it will put it in the final directory. So when you're mining, you'll mine from the final directory and you don't need a lot of IO speeds. So you can have the slowest disk possible. You just need a lot of space to put it in the final directory because you don't need a lot of, lot of reads when you're mining. But at the time of generating the plot file, you do a lot of intense IO. So you need a disk which is very fast at the time of generation. So this is important that you pick a temporary folder in a drive which has very fast IO. And, and that's for me is the NVMe SSD, which is, I'm gonna put both of them in the same drive for now. But the point to be taken here is that at the time of generation, you want your fastest drive as your temporary directory so that you can generate plots faster. And then your slowest disk or the disk with the maximum space. And even though it's slow, you can save your final plots there. So I'm just gonna pick the same directory for both of them. And now I want to join a pool. So this time I can, I can join a pool where I'm pooling for myself or I can connect to an existing pool. I'm gonna go with connecting an existing pool so that I can get steady revenue. So I need a pool URL. So if you go back, there are a couple of pools to choose from, but I'm gonna go with the pool dot space. I'll leave a link to this in the description. How do I join? As you can see, there are a few URLs to join the pool. I'm gonna pick the EU one. So that's close to me and select the URL.
All right. So I don't need to select any fee. The default should work. And it will give you some details to confirm that you are joining the right pool, such as the protocol fee, uh, which is 0 0.01 percent sorry it's one percent and say create so now you're trying to create a plot a plot which can work with pool mining even though you selected a pool url you can switch pools after the plots are generated so you can see the log and the plot is generating this would take about i would say four to six hours depending on how fast your ssd is but you don't have to do anything in this meantime. Sim like before, you can minimize this and then focus on other mining tasks. One thing I would add is because it does require some CPU and RAM usage, I would suggest to reduce your Monero mining capacity in order to allocate some CPU resources for plotting. It's been a few hours. Now let's get back in. If you open the dashboard, you can see that my blockchain has completely synced up and so has my wallet completely synced up and if you go back to the plot section previously we were plotting creating a new plot and now the plotting has finished and it started farming for rewards so i mentioned before that we're doing pool mining so if you go back into the pool section you can see a bunch of items here these are called nfts okay quick overview on what's happening here when you create plots which support pool mining with chia First thing you do is you create an NFT within your account and you create plots for the new NFT. So I inadvertently created more plots and I, and doing so, I also created more NFTs because my blockchain was not synced up. So I've created a bunch of NFTs and I tried to create new plots within each NFT. Ideally, you don't need so many NFTs. You can just create more and more plots within the same NFT. And I also canceled most of these plots so you can see how a lot of these NFTs don't have any plots. This is one here, Apricot Beaver and Chocolate Dove, which have one plot each. Now, the advantage of assigning plots into different NFTs is that you can have, let's say, Chocolate Dove mining for one pool, and then you can have Apricot Beaver, you can say change pool, and then you can mine for a different pool so that you don't have to mine with all your storage on one single pool. That way, you can get the advantages of mining for different pools with different amounts of storage. So right now, I have just one plot in Chocolate Dough. If I want to add more plots under this NFT, I can by just pressing Add a Plot. And then you have the default options from before. I'm just going to change to something I want. I want to add three more plots. So right now, once this finishes, we'll have four plots under Chocolate Dough. And I can assign these four plots into different pools. Or I can just leave it to the pool it's currently assigned to. So I'm just going to select everything same as before. So something we didn't have before was selecting an NFT. Now we can select an NFT and the pool you, it goes to will be the pool in which the NFT is mining for. If you say none, you can add a new plot NFT. But I'm going to select chocolate dough and say create. So now we're already farming for pool rewards and we finished all the five steps. So we set up the wallet, we sync our blockchain. We top up with Chia, we generated some plots and we created NFTs while doing so. And we started mining. And now we're trying to fill up the remaining space in our hard drive with more plots so that we can increase our contribution to the pool and thus our own rewards within the pool. And that's it guys. Now you can create more and more plots, assign them to NFTs and assign your NFTs to different pools. I would generally go with just one single pool and most of my plots under a single NFT. But if you want to divide your plots across different NFTs and different pools, you can also do so. That's everything I have to say. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this series. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. See you.